Oh, hello, my name is uh, Vishnu Kalindi. I work at the International Telecommunication Union in Geneva. Uh, my portfolio of responsibility uh, is limited to rural telecommunications. Okay, so can you first tell us about the first report, uh, which is the one focused on uh, Bhutan, and uh, tell us about how the study was initiated and uh, why the study was made in Bhutan especially. Uh, this report uh, presents the project undertaken by Government of India, ITU mm -hmm. and UPU in Bhutan with the okay. cooperation of uh, Bhutan Telecom and Bhutan Post. Mm -hmm. When we started the project, we began with the assumption that Bhutan being an all mountainous country, let us take anywhere from 2 to 28 days. Mm -hmm. Our project focused at that time on uh, an element of uh, introducing electronic communication. Uh -huh. if, if somebody can go to the post office, get the letter scanned and send it by email, it could be delivered the next day. That mm -hmm. would greatly facilitate communication. Mm -hmm. Then we covered 38 post offices, uh -huh. uh, which meant we equipped them, paying the postmasters, etc. 30 of the of 38, six post offices are in some of the most remote locations. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they would take anywhere between two to eight days, two to seven days to uh -huh. one way walk. Uh -huh. Okay. Two of them are cut off for six months of a year, mm -hmm. Laya and Lunana. And Lunana is cut off for seven months. Mm -hmm. uh, the government of India provided uh, VSAT equipment with a hub in Thimpu, mm -hmm. access to Indian satellite free for the duration of the project, uh, training and maintenance, and solar power and battery support to the remote areas. Mm -hmm. uh, we evaluated the project uh, last year mm -hmm. and we find that the project had unexpected benefits. It was the first time that mm -hmm. many people had ever had been made a telephone call. Mm -hmm. People came from different places, distant places to use the facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, apart from the major objectives which were supposed to be achieved, there were unintended side effects, very mm -hmm. beneficial. Like the culture of Bhutan Post has changed. Uh, Everybody has now become technologically aware and they use technology for different aspects of their daily work, like tracking mail, uh, tracking express post. Mm -hmm. uh, on the whole, we find that the benefits have been very substantial. Was there any challenges while conducting the study in Bhutan? Challenges were serious in terms of uh, establishing these facilities at remote locations. Mm -hmm. uh, for one location, uh, Bhutan Telecom hired 156 porters and 50 horses, but for most of other places, other, other four places, they transported the equipment by helicopters. There are serious environmental challenges. If you get these remote locations, equipment can go wrong. Uh, you know, a lot of pressure on them, snow, lack of sun, sunshine, etc. Uh, the problem is, if something goes wrong with uh, these uh, this facilities, it might take anywhere from six to nine months to get it back on track. Mm. But fortunately, after uh, five years of existence, all but one VSAT stations are functioning. And we mm. thank Government of India for the help they have extended. We are very grateful to the engineers of TCIL who braved high altitude and extremely mm. difficult conditions to go and install the equipment. Mm. And provide support later. Mm -hmm. So that is the first report. Thank you so much for informing us about it. Let's move on to the second report. So this can is, you tell us? This yeah. is the second book, uh, ICT's Community Access and Development, Case Studies from the Six Developing Countries. This book presents uh, uh, ITU projects which were undertaken over the last 10 years uh, mm -hmm. in different parts of the world. The objective of those projects was to develop models for provision of ICT access in rural areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, these projects have typically involved a uh, large number of partners and uh, they, the study compares the lessons learned from different, different countries. Mm -hmm. uh, the six countries provide interesting variations in terms of socio-economic status and differing needs of target groups. The countries are, uh, the projects are Timbuktu in Mali, mm -hmm. Bhutan, Honduras, Vietnam, Nicaragua and Tanzania. Okay. As you see, the the, the context encompass marginal economies, marginal economies in transition, and emerging economies. Uh, 
the data for the studies has been conducted by local project teams. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and we also conducted a village level survey of users and non-users of these facilities to identify the discriminant that distinguish these two groups. Mm -hmm. uh, the projects encountered different issues at different project sites. Mm -hmm. But these differences actually offer great opportunity to study two important issues, social and economic factors that influence the acceptance and utilization of ICT, mm. how, how to best realize the role that ICT can play in the process of economic and social development. Mm -hmm. So what are the, the, any challenges that you faced in the study or was it, uh... The critical factors are access to education, literacy mm. and higher education is the most important enabling factor that mm -hmm. makes access to information usable for the target, target groups. But in one case, we find that literacy and economic opportunities make communities ICT friendly. Mm -hmm. In another case, we find that lack of economic opportunities result in limited use of the facilities. Mm -hmm. But most important thing is that social, return, social rate of return is likely to be very high. Mm -hmm. And ignoring it for the sake of financial return is self-defeating. Mm -hmm. uh, finally, we have to say one word. Access to ICT programs have to be taken up as an integral part of other ongoing development projects. Mm -hmm. Access to information has to be taken up as an investment that has massive impact, overarching impact on all activities of an economy and therefore cannot and should not be constricted by financial return alone. Okay. So that's the second uh, study. So can you tell us about the third report? This publication. ICT's new services and transformation of the post mm -hmm. is a joint ITU UPU uh, report. Okay. Uh, work was work started on this report last year, mm. and this is basically an extension of the Bhutan project. Okay. When internally we reviewed Bhutan project and uh, trying to consolidate what can be or what general points can be made, mm. uh, so the suggestion was raised that uh, a number of case studies. Uh, of where post offices transform themselves can be brought together mm. in order to draw guidelines which will be useful for developing countries. Mm -hmm. And after very uh, extensive consultation, we, we identified projects in seven countries. Okay. Uh, they are Bhutan, Botswana. Both these countries used post offices to provide communication services in mm -hmm. rural and remote areas. Okay. Brazil. Mm -hmm. Brazil Post has extensive, makes extensive use of information and communication technologies in financial services and postal mm -hmm. banking system, which has become extremely efficient. Okay. Uh, Italy, Italy, Italy Post uses virtual mobile network for financial applications. Mm -hmm. uh, Russia, where they have uh, an extensive program on cyber money, money transfer uh, areas. Okay. Uh, uh, Saudi Arabia. Mm -hmm. Uh, Saudi Arabia has an interesting uh, project on integrating electronic address and uh, physical address. Okay. Uh, which means that you basically have a database of all the customers in the country. Uh -huh. This has given a massive push to e-commerce in the country. Uh -huh. Things can be delivered. And a large number of traditional artisans in some of the most remotest parts are using Saudi Post network to, to sell their uh, sell oh. their sell their uh, goods. Okay. And Saudi Post has a portal, you know, it has a it has a supermarket on the uh, on a virtual supermarket mm -hmm. where all these different artisans participate to sell there. And and this this electronic address system has electronic physical address system has facilitated oh. e-commerce in great you know in a great way. Okay. Uh, then we have a case study from South Korea where uh, South Korean Post uh, supports e-commerce and they, mm. have, they have a portal for e-commerce, they can guarantee the quality of goods produced on fish from Post and in this process they have also promoted small industry. Mm. I hope I have covered all the, all the, all the, all the countries. Uh, but one most important thing is uh, in, in, use of ICT in post is not just uh, confined to the impact is not confined just to the post office okay. but it has a cascading effect on the whole of the economy the number of jobs created mm -hmm. is, uh, is, is the most important thing it has also enabled uh, the postal services to improve quality of their service and provide value added services uh, I'm Pradesh Nath 
Uh, I work in an institute called National Institute of Science, Technology and Development Studies in Delhi. So I was associated with these uh, first two publications. Uh, ICT's so Community Access and Development and uh, Bhutan Report, the Satellite Access and that. So uh, your question on methodology is uh, this like uh, we uh, used a questionnaire based uh, structure uh, okay. data collection. Uh, uh, some places we visited, visited some places we uh, used the local uh, uh, people to collect the information. Mm -hmm. Basically uh, our idea was to understand the you know, socio-economic backgrounds of the users and non-users of the services. Okay. And to see that what uh, what are the factors that can discriminate mm. uh, between users and non-users. Okay. So if some people are not using it, why are not they using it? Mm. And if some people are using it, who are they who are using it? Mm. And uh, so uh, basically we have tried to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, identify beforehand mm. that what could be the possible factors okay? mm. and data data was collected uh, on those factors okay? yes. so our theoretical understanding was that uh, uh, like uh, literacy health like social factors as mm. well as economic factors together they determine actually the you know use of uh, use of ICT mm. if when access is provided Mm. And uh, so uh, data data was collected on the socio-economic uh, factors behind uh, mm. uh, behind use, using or non-using uh, ICT services that was being provi provided to the mm. people around. So and then uh, some statistical exercise was uh, uh, was conducted mm. uh, to arrive at this result mm. that uh, uh, the result as. Uh, just uh, uh, narrated you that one important factor is uh, literacy mm. and education. Mm. This is the most important factor that discriminates. Mm. Uh, and second thing is that uh, you know, like uh, how uh, integrated this access to ICT program is with the developmental program. Mm. Third thing, we realize that uh, this access to ICT has a cascading effect on uh, you know the all aspects of the economic and social life. Mm. So the social return on such investment is very high. Mm. So it should never be compared with the, you know, the short-term uh, uh, loss and uh, profit account. Mm. So these are the major issues that actually, I mean, the the survey was focused on mm. to 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 get uh, enlightened about these factors. My just my final question would be: How did you define an e-service when you discussed the Butwana, uh, sorry, the Bhutan? Uh, uh, study. Mm -hmm. What definition did you give for e-service before you conducted the surveys? E-service uh, for Bhutan it was very simple. Access to say email mm. or say uh, I mean uh, that was the, the that was the uh, I mean the mm. most important service that was being provided to them. Uh -huh. uh, internet service basically. Uh -huh. uh, so for them it was the uh, main thing. It was as simple as that. Uh -huh. Okay. Thank you so much, Professor, for Thank your you. insights. Thanks.